Classic. I hope you're having a great morning. Uh, we're going to break down what's going on in the Luna Classic universe. Now, look, you're about 25% up from the dump that we had that it was really kind of catastrophic after March, after everything kind of dipped down. You know, we lost, you know, three zeros too. And now we're just kind of making our way back up because Terraform Labs, they've been involved. They've created a problem. They filed bankruptcy. They got sued. We found out Duke Kwan was actually the one. Uh, he is the bad actor in this. You know, we, we, we saw those things. So now let's talk about where we go from here. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button on the way in. And uh, let's kick this off because we've had a nice little surge in price. And if you bought a little bit towards the bottom and you DCA'd, then you're feeling pretty good about your position. If you didn't, then you're probably still down a little bit uh, because you've put enough of your risk in. Uh, you might not be feeling as good. And that would be silly because long term, you're still in a great place. Because remember, at the end of this, there's like a million people holding Terra Luna Classic. This is not a small project by any means. And it currently has a market cap of about 500 million. So um, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm about to get into a bull run. Let's go. Oh, damn, I forgot. Go to Terra Casino and sign up today. There's a link in the description down below. You can play Rich Wild and the Pearls of Vishnu from Play and Go and Terra Casino. Also, uh, $2 million still being in euros being given away until December 22nd. So if you haven't signed up, sign up today. By the way, I'm tracking you. I know every single one of you, I'm watching you all. Make sure you sign up at terracasino.io today. Link description below. You know it. All right, so the big news, not necessarily gr huge, but big news is this. You know, Ceramic, which is Leonardo, is working on this repeg proposal. L Luna Classic Warrior says, I am not sure how CZ Binance would react to the repeg plan of Leonardo uh, and Ceramic. One thing I know is this plan is 100% doable. Uh, why do I care how CZ Bin Binance would react? Um, he's not in charge anymore. He doesn't control anything. Uh, he he's basically name only. Look, no disrespect to CZ Binance. He's done a lot for cryptocurrency over the years, but I don't care what CZ Binance has to say about it. He's not in charge of anything. So uh, it's not a perfect plan for USTC in short term, but for long term, it's an amazing plan. Now, somebody asked him to summarize it and he said, well, in the simplest terms, how would it impact USTC holders? So Leonardo comes up with this. It's a positive. Nothing is replaced. It's just a name change. Our plan will give USTC today to utility. You are going to need it if you want to over collateralize stablecoin and you will need uh, Lunk to stake if you want to earn USTC and the new stablecoin. It's about additional benefits with what we have, not replacing it. So as I said, Leonardo, people are not understanding what the benefit is for old USTC are afraid of being forgotten. I suggest you publish an article explaining this part. It's there, but it's messy. You would need to look for it. It's in the Q&A and white paper. Today, the old USTC is two cents. To swap to the new USTC, the old one needs to be a dollar and have collateral to support the mint or you stake it for the new stable coin. So no old USTC, no new USTC. It's old USTC forgotten. No, the info I've just given you is enough for some others to trigger for a thousand question. We went early with the plan because it needed community input, not just from a specific part of the ecosystem, but from everybody. A stable coin is a fundamental part of LUNK. It's not project specific. I'll make it more digestible once the plan moves to a governance vote. If I did that now, it would be at the expense of working on the plan. For many, follow us as an education, and they see how this complicated under the hood stuff is and what we're doing right now. So what we're doing right now is we're coming up with the plan and what people are asking for is like, explain it to me like I'm five and they're not ready to do that yet. And basically what we're talking about is taking USTC, converting it to USTY, uh, creating the stability from there, and we'll have to see what the inner workings look like, but the stable coin, uh, and by the way, we won't be able to call it a stable coin. There'll be legislation all around the world for this. So it won't be stable coin. It'll be an algorithmic fungible token, an AFT, if you will, or at least that's what I think it would end up being called because it would be, uh, it would be reliant on a certain mechanism in the algorithm to keep it uh, functional and stable. So that is my opinion. That is not a statement of fact at this point, but uh, we'll have to see when all of this comes out and the smarts like Strathcole start breaking it down and start giving us some of the information digested so that we know what's going on. I'm not a programmer. I can't tell you 
you know exactly how this plays out. Here's what I can tell you. Everybody right now is laser focused on getting you the most maximum value for your investment. That's what matters the most. And we're getting into the bull run portion. And I think after Thanksgiving in the United States, Thanksgiving, by the way, for those of you that don't know, uh, it's when we set up the Indians and started mass murdering them. Okay. So um, that's, and we celebrated. It, it didn't work. It's not, it's not in that order, but you know what I mean? You know, you've, if you read American book, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, probably going to have a nice little dip. Then we're going to have a big rip towards the end of December or to, towards the beginning of December. And then we're really going to start taking off until we get to Christmas. At least that's what it looks like. I'm not a genius here. I just look like a genius. Einsteiner. You know what I mean? So um, I do think that we're about to have a big rip. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. Now, um, a lot of people are putting a lot of um, a, a lot of effort into letting you know that Terra Classic looks like because of the, the volume, because of the repeg, because of all of the things that are working in unison, that 305 is the next surge. And if you look at the chart, which we're going to do right now, then let me zoom out here so you can see it. This is a daily chart and, and this is what it looks like. This is, this is what the move would look like ultimately. And, you know, to be fair here, this is on this longer term here. This is, uh, the, the, the move down. Now, if I were to at least go to this point right here, and say that, you know, this is just a continuation of this move on the Fib retracement. What I'm doing is I'm altering something that I've told you guys for a while now is what I think is going to happen. And I'm doing that because this was the impulse move right here. And then we broke down below it. So I really want to look at it from a different light. And when I do this, I start to pull it down. It actually makes a little bit more sense from this location because now you can see that we're moving in and out of this 236 and 382 zone. Uh, and that we're, you know, we're kind of ranging here that, again, the expectation would be a continued move into this range. But let me lower the range just slightly. Doesn't really matter that much. But uh, we're calling it between 3015 and 3018 as the next impulse move. And you can see here with 3013 that we're actually in that sort of range right now for that next comeuppance, if you will. So I do think that we're getting ready to have another big surge. The money is going to start trickling back into the market. I think over the next couple of days, we're going to start seeing a, 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 a really big move. Now today, what we're witnessing is a surge in Bitcoin and a dump in Ethereum and some of the alts. We're not looking at huge dumps, but we are looking at liquidity being pulled back out from altcoins because Bitcoin is not done yet. Now, let me specify. It is my opinion, this is not factual, but it's my opinion that Bitcoin goes to 97,000, then it dumps down about 10, 10 to 15%, and then it goes back up and it finally tests 100,000, and then it dumps back down uh, another 10% or so, and then we get an explosive move. Just so you guys understand, 97,000, then a dip down to, you know, let's call it 85, something like that, and then a rip back up to 100,000, and then a dip back down to 90, and then boom, we're off to the races, if you will. So that's when, so, and for right now, I don't think that that's going to affect Luna Classic in a positive fashion. I don't think that's going to cause any kind of pumps just for right now. What would cause a pump here would be some kind of news in this repeg or, you know, something dramatic that happens in a positive light that would be generated by us. Uh, for example, Juris Protocol coming up with a, a lending application that that's ready to go uh, right away where you can start borrowing and investing and that's ultimately what we're looking for. So, and by that, by the way, that's the reason everything took off. But now let's look at it and let's see, is there any interest in Luna Classic? Well, the answer to that is a resounding, yeah, 61 million in volume. Uh, when you look at the markets, uh, it looks like uh, we go from the volume percent here. Uh, BTCC is still crushing right now. Uh, Grove X having a nice little run right here. Binance kind of sandwiched in there in the middle. Now, look, I, you know, I don't know about this volume. I, I'm not sure about this volume. I'm sure what it says. I'm sure that they are they have moderate confidence in that it's real, but the reserve data is unavailable. So I'm not really sure. I, I don't know that this is not just an attempt to get people to trade on BTC, BTCC. I don't know that at all, okay? Uh, so for now, we have to take it 
for what it is, and that's that we have 61 million in volume. However, uh, even 15 million in volume for a day, uh, and 17, so about 18 million in volume. It, 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 we did that every day for Binance. That would be a pretty good amount, but it's when you get to that 100 million that makes a big deal, right? So, uh, and we've had some really big amounts for the last bunch of days. So I think that we're in, you know, we're still kind of in that public lexicon. So um, it, it, the pump will continue. Also, we're up to 19 million. Uh, just kind of dead even with yesterday on USTC. But we don't need that because that doesn't provide a function right now for uh, Binance to do any burns or anything like that. So, you know, we're not really there with that yet. But, uh, you know, we did have some, we've got a lot of movement. There's an opportunity uh, for you to swing trade it if you want to. Uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. Again, I'm not really a fan. You can see here, I mean, it's not a stable coin, but it's kind of stable at this moment. We haven't had a big surge one way or another. If we do have a surge, I think it's going to go up. But the market... Really, you know, altcoins still kind of pushing in that downward sort of momentum. So, I mean, you look here, not a lot of meat on the bone, if you will, uh, for for too much swing trading. Uh, you got to have a lot. You got to put a lot of risk into it to make a lot of reward off of it. So not exactly lucrative. You know, this move right here was, was kind of lucrative right here uh, in November. Uh, maybe you can say the beginning of November uh, was a nice little move right there. But again, you got to put a lot of risk into this to get a little bit of reward. So, um you know, I, I don't know that we're not there yet, I guess is basically a summary. So let's keep moving on. 393 million burned over the last seven days. That's a big number. Uh, in fact, if you go through this and you start to look, um, then, you know, you see over the last seven days, it's this right here, 43, 35, 25, 96 million in one day, 30 in one day. And then yesterday, another 90 million. There's a significant amount of burns that have been happening more than what we've normally seen. Now today, 52 million. Now, you know, you keep going back here and you keep seeing these lower numbers. Like these are higher numbers. So we are looking at significant burns that are happening on uh, uh, Luna Classic. And it occurs to me now that maybe, just maybe, and we'll need to get clarification on this, but it could be that BTCC is the one that's doing these burns now that I think about it, because they're getting a significant amount of trade volume. And if that's where the burns are coming from and they're not whitelisted, then maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's something. Uh, we'll, you know, once we get more information, then we'll get back to you and, you know, we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Now, uh, also with that, 24.5 billion of cat with hat have been burned. Now, look, I gave you this call a while back. I told you guys that I thought it was going to pump from where I gave it to you right now for the pump. You should be up one to a 20, about 30% from, from that location. Now, the price has dipped a little bit, but it's still up relatively. So uh, when you look at it over here, cat with hat trading at about $90 right now. But again, I gave it to you about 60. So I guess we're about 50%. Uh, now, uh, one more thing that I want to point out. Remember we talked about GDEX yesterday, the Garuda uh, decentralized, but Garuda X is actually up significantly over the last couple of days, up 33% in the last, I want to say 48 hours. Remember this was trading about $45 a couple of days ago, now up to $60 today. So, um, you know, big moves coming out of some of these projects that you've seen over the last bunch of days. Also, uh, Cookie, I think, is, is going to have a big rip coming up at some point very, very soon. Only, you know, very small volume at this point, down quite a bit, just like everything else. But I think, you know, a lot of these different things, as they come up with utilities and reasons to exist within this ecosystem, I think you're going to see some really big moves. Speaking of really big moves, I didn't get any pump yesterday. Now, look, there's plenty of pairings here and an APR for, for any one of these projects that you're looking for. Uh, if you want to put in and start earning some yield on them. A great opportunity for you. Uh, but the launch pad, I'm still at 89.75 right there, starting to slow down. I guess I'm going to have to suck it up and buy 1,025 Terra. You have to boss on me. Well, maybe a little bit. But um, so we'll, we'll get to that. I want to get a little bit in here for the last 30 days. You know what I mean? So um, let, let's see what happens there. I'll top off and then we'll start farming this tomorrow. All right. Uh, so that being said, uh, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, really, to summarize here, I think we're going to get this big move. It's coming very, very soon. Uh, we just need to, to, to feel it kind of uh, play its way out. We need an impetus. We need some kind of momentum builder to start that quote-unquote gathering storm, if you will, the thing that really sets us off and tells us that the next big move is coming. But that next big impulse move you know, goes up 30% from where we are right now. 
uh, gets us into that 1800 range, uh, something like that. And then from there, about 40%, I guess. Uh, but it, th from there, that's when we really can kind of consolidate. And that's when people start to discover, hey, there was just a big movement on Luna Classic. Maybe we should buy just a little bit. Everybody loves a comeback story. That's the narrative. And then boom, this thing absolutely takes off. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, uh, this is not financial advice. I'm always right. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you hit the like button on the way in, on the way out. Just hit the like button. Just hit it. Just, just hit it. And uh, leave a comment down below. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.